What up team, it's your boy Motorbanker back again with another Shadow Legends video talking about the new upcoming fusion, which is going to be Helicath here. Really cool looking champion, let's dive straight into it. We have a legendary defense based demon spawn legendary. His skills, listen, I want to talk about some red flags before we get into this. Some players go for every fusion no matter what, which is completely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're one of those players who might not have the resources to simply shell out everything you have to pursue any current fusion, you might want to take a close look at what we have to talk about here today because there are a few things that I saw when going over this kit that kind of raised my eyebrow a bit and I said, hmm, this is probably not going to be as good as I see a lot of people saying it's going to be. So let's go over these skills very quickly here. Attacks one enemy twice, has a 30% chance of placing that weakened debuff. Hopefully it goes up to 50 once it's fully booked, will ignore shield and block damage. Next, we have the A2 attacks all enemy, placing a shield buff on all allies for two turns. The value of this shield is going to be proportional to this champion's defense, so we have some pretty strong scaling there. If you're curious about defense scaling with the shield, of course, we do have Valkyrie, so just to kind of give you some idea as far as how big the shields can in fact get, they can definitely be quite massive with the increased defense. And once we know how much base defense this guy is going to have to see if it's going to be easy to in fact gear this champion. Next we have this A3 which is going to be kind of the main talking point and you'll see why. Devoted Servants, 6 turn cooldown, that's the main thing to remember. Active effect places a block damage buff on all allies for two turns. Passive effect whenever block damage buff placed on an ally is removed, stolen, or expires. It then places defense up on that ally for two turns. This is cool, but I don't really think it's needed because any type of setting I can possibly think of, you're probably always going to pair this guy with someone with an increased defense simply based off of the fact that he has a really strong a2 that synergizes with his defense as it is so if you had to wait for this champion to i guess self buff then you can definitely run into a few problems because you'd have to wait the two turn duration for block damage to fall off of helicath himself then he would get the increased defense, then you'd be using Winds of the Pit. It's not the biggest issue in the world, but there is just some conflicting synergy there when you would most likely just bring a champion anyway to provide that defense up buff for this champion so he can just pump out his A2 whenever he wants and he's not really held back by anything. Now, this is what I want to talk about before I get onto the passive, the books. So. In the history of Raid, every champion that's had a 6 turn cooldown, I've never seen it drop the cooldown all the way down to 3 with something like unkillable, block damage, I mean you name it. Usually it reduces it by 2, so what does that mean with a 4 turn cooldown on something like this? It's going to be a bit harder to fit into a composition because then you're going to need someone that cleanses for clan boss specifically you're going to need block debuffs all of that good stuff here so there's going to be a lot of work needed to use this champion who is he going to shine with if you have sir nicholas he's going to do great if you have rush card the tower he's of course also going to do fantastic here which gets into the passive increases this champion's defense by five percent for each ally under a block damage buff here so once again the ideal time to be using that a2 would be he uses the a3 provides block damage for everyone he gets that feast of agony passive increases in his defense then an ally applies defense up making sure that next turn he gets to use winds of the pit instead of having to wait a whole other turn here so he gets a stacked shield from all of the defensive bonuses now, as the kit reads on its own, just quickly going back to that in case people aren't quite following me there, if he has to wait until block damage drops off to get that increased defense, then he would not be gaining the benefit from the passive there, so there would be that trade-off. And on top of it, he also has another passive effect, counterattacks with the default skill whenever an ally is hit, while under block damage can only occur once per enemy turn, so he can counterattack once in the clan boss per turn which is going to be nice because he does have a weaken on the a1 and the a1 could potentially also hit quite hard here rounding things off with the aura we have increases ally defense by 30 percent in all battles which hey it's nothing to shy away from so all in all this champion's pretty cool but like i said there are a few drawbacks here first of all if you don't have legendary books to pump into this guy what are you going to do with the six turn cooldown 
honestly. It's one thing to invest in a fusion and say, okay, you can help me out for clan boss. I already have Sir Nicholas. This would be an awesome pair, but you're going to need the books. You need them to land in that A3. Who knows how many books this guy is going to take? Hopefully not that many. That would be nice. Eight might be a reach, but eight would definitely be nice. It could be 13, 14. You never know with Clarion, but now that we've gone over that, the main point I wanted to talk about is really consider where you're going to use this champion before kind of committing and fully committing to this fusion because fusion of course takes a lot of resources and i do know the game is in a semi-stale state we're getting some really good quality of life but as far as new content not so much as of yet so a lot of people do look forward to fusions as their way of getting new champions playing around with them but that can be expensive for the average player so i did want to bring up that information there because there were quite a few concerns about those long cooldowns from helicath even though as i already mentioned he would have awesome synergy with champions like demitha roshkar the tower sir nicholas you would definitely need a cleanser like a doom priest to make sure they're cleansing and of course he's going to probably have to go last in the rotation to make sure every single champion's getting value of that block damage buff for two straight turns if you want to utilize it to the maximum ability you can but all in all if you are looking for a clan boss champions first reaction he's going to be a good champion to pursue if you do have the legendary books if you don't you can go for him and slowly wait throughout time as you do get legendary books which Let's be honest, are quite difficult to get in this game. But if you have them saved up and you're willing to dump into this champion or you just want to wait for more information about this champion to come out, you can absolutely do that to help round out your decision here. As far as other dungeons go, he's going to be pretty good. I mean, one of the other things that came to mind when I looked at him was going to be Spider. I know lots of people are struggling with Spider and it would make sense he is green, which means he's going to be a weak affinity to the spider. He's going to have a massive shield he can place. He's going to have block damage he can place. So this definitely opens up the room if you want to use him unbooked because it's going to work since he has such strong cooldowns to let the rest of your team really shine in spider 25 24 whatever works for you blue affinity of course would be best since the spiderlings would be focusing this champion now the counter attack Listen, the counterattack might be something that's going to take up a lot of time for you in the spider, but if you don't care about time at all, you're looking for consistency, throwing this guy in high defense, stun set, he can definitely put out a lot of work for your team here and making sure you can get to those end stages in the spider 25. Give me your thoughts, give me your feedback. I'm curious as to what you guys think about this champion. I would say this guy's probably middle of the pack if you're comparing this fusion to all of the fusions. I do like the increased value in Spider, but I really don't like fusions that come out with just one spot they shine. I like multi-use legendaries, like many we have seen in the past here, but this definitely isn't one of the worst ones. We've had some pretty useless fusions in the past. So give me your thoughts. Where were you guys going to use him if you do plan on going for him? Are you just going to get him because you can get him? And I don't know, you're just watching this video for fun. I'm always curious to see what the community has up their sleeves as far as any plans they have for new fusions and if they think it's worth it or not. That's going to conclude this video. Don't forget if you enjoyed this content, smash that like button, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and I will see you all in the next upload. Thank <laughs> you.